Good morning. Oshkosh Common Council candidate Mike Ford here. Make sure you go visit www.oshkoshforall.com uh, to learn a little bit more about me. Um, but I'm, I'm making this video this morning because I was asked by a, a hope or hopefully a, a future constituent um, about, about neighborhood revitalization and how we are going to uh, ensure that our, our Oshkosh neighborhoods um, remain strong and our tax base here um, remains, remains strong. Um, and this is an issue that I'm that I that really hits near and dear to my heart. Um, so when I first moved to Oshkosh, I was out in the front lawn doing something, and a uh, a neighbor, now a friend, walked by and she asked me um, if I knew about the Millers Bay Neighborhood Association. And I said, No, I don't know anything about it. I just I just got here. This was like eight years ago. Um, and she said, Okay, well here's the information, and maybe you want to be involved in 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 the plan. And I thought, okay, sure, I like to be involved in things. Um, and little did I know that would end up with me being on the, uh, you know, the, the, the chair of the, uh, the committee that came up with our neighborhood plan. Um, it really led to me being more involved in city affairs. And, and now I'm, I'm privileged to be, you know, was first on the board of the Millers Bay Neighborhood Association, now I'm the president of the Millers Bay uh, Neighborhood Association. So neighborhoods are near and dear to my heart. It's, it's the lifeblood uh, lifeblood of a community. We need we need economic development, right? We need that part of the tax base, and that's important. Um, but if if Oshkosh isn't a great place to live, if our neighborhoods aren't strong, um, if we don't have that sense of community, we're going to be we're going to we're we're not going to thrive. We're not going to reach our maximum uh, potential. Um, so I, I care a lot about communities, or about excuse me, about neighborhoods. I care about the community too. Um, so so the question though, how do we how do we strengthen our neighborhoods. Well, one is doubling down on the incentive programs we already have, things like, like Sold on Oshkosh that offer uh, forgivable uh, zero interest loans that are forgiven over the period of five years uh, for, for homeowners in certain neighborhoods if they meet qualifications. We need to be very proactive about getting information about programs like that out there and we need to find new ways to distribute that information and advertise that even beyond our community because if we're just pushing these programs within our neighborhoods. Well, our neighborhoods are, are populated by people often that already own a home there. Um, so, so giving them information about how to you know, get a low interest loan to buy a new home doesn't really, doesn't really help them. So being creative and finding new ways to get information about the programs we already have out there. Um, we also need to, 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 to focus on, on planning. Because um, a lot of what we, we do in, in, in government, it, it's, it's a long term. For it to be effective, it has to be, has to be long term. I know everybody likes to see immediate results and that's, that's important. And the immediate things like, hey, a new building or something that gets torn down, that gets a lot of attention. But it is kind of like a, a retirement account where if, if you just focus on the shiny object of the day, you're not going to get to that end goal that you're, that you're shooting for. But a good plan allows you to have a nice long term strategy. Um, to actually get something done. So, for example, right now the Jackson Street uh, corridor plan is a good example of um, of a plan that 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 will will hopefully improve that major gateway, the one street that goes all the way through Oshkosh, that will address some of the uh, issues of walkability, um, issues of safety, issues of traffic calming, to to really uh, in, improve the quality of life in in that neighborhood. But having a great plan is just one thing. We have to actually implement. And you know what? One of the problems with implementation is we have a lot of plans, a lot of plans that overlap with one another, that deal with different things that all collectively impact the quality of life in a neighborhood. So I think it's so important that we align our plans, that we have some type of common information system where we have all of our goals in one place. And why that's important is, is it allows us to develop really clear performance measures. So we're not just creating the best plan, but we're implementing it. And you know what? If we have clear performance measures about what our expectations are tied to a timeline, we can have points where we can reflect on what's working, what's not working, and why. So we can adjust, right? Plans are going to change. Things are going to occur um, that are unexpected. Look at what's happening right now. Um, what, 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 makes, what makes a plan really successful and allows a plan to be implemented is that we have those, those clear performance measures built in and those points where we can look and we can readjust what we're doing if we're not meeting, meeting our goals. So, so that's one thing we can do. Um, I also think we can be more creative with small quality of life things. One of the issues that Oshkosh has is that though we have awesome parks, I mean, go to Menominee Park, 
go to South Shore or uh, South, South Shore, go to South Park, um, go to Stevens Park. I mean, these are some incredibly incredible public places. Um, but overall, we trail some of our peers in, in the percentage of our land that's used for parkland. So something we can do is be creative with micro parks and infill and, and, and things that, that might make sense in a, in a more dense area of the city that can add just a nice, a nice quality of life, uh, quality of life uh, feature. Um, another thing that we can do, and this is, this is, this is more us, us advocating, um, is try to work with the state and other communities in changing the way that our, our revenues, uh, our revenue situation works. Um, for local government. So this is going to be, right, if you haven't tuned out yet, you might tune out now because this is the public budgeting professor in me. Um, but for, for the past few years, we've been stuck in a situation where the total amount of revenue increases that we could get for the city is tied to increases in, in equalized value. So it's really tied to new construction. So the incentive there is to build new stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that but the problem is it disincentivizes perhaps improving what we already have because the increase to the tax base is going to be more dramatic with a new big building or a new fancy expensive house than it is from improving something in, in, in our city's urban core. So this is going to be a long-term solution. It's something that every city in Oshkosh, every municipality not in Oshkosh, in Wisconsin faces. But we need to find ways to work with the state and change that situation so that there's more of an incentive, a financial incentive for the city uh, to pursue uh, some of these, these, these neighborhood revitalization projects. Um, and lastly, we need to focus on implementation of neighborhood specific plans. One of the, the great joys of working with the Millers by Neighborhood Association is developing um, some, some awesome plans to improve parts of our parts of our neighborhood. One of the great frustrations of working in the Millers Bay Neighborhood Association is seeing implementation lag. I think that is the next phase of, of our neighborhood project in Oshkosh that has been highly successful thus far, is we, we, we've gotten really good at creating awesome plans. We need to figure out how to implement them and actually get them done. That is the next phase. Um, I don't claim to have the perfect solution to that, but I can tell you that I am focused on that, and that's something I will fight for. So I hope this helps to answer your question. Um, I hope you're staying uh, staying safe out there and, and, and not getting too bored. Um, if you're around this weekend, keep an eye out. My, my plan is to go very low tech this weekend and put this sign on a big stick and just walk around town. I like walking around town um, and you know, maybe chatting people up if they're willing to stay six feet away from me, um, but hopefully build up a little more support. So if you haven't gotten an absentee ballot yet, go get that absentee ballot and have a great, uh, have a great day. Thank you for your question.